Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour back in our Father's Word. That chapter 6 was a fantastic chapter. It told us how the Nephilim, the fallen angels, came to earth. and were, It was one of Satan's tricks of trying to disrupt the woman's ability to bring forth the perfect Christ child. And certainly, when one of the biggest mistakes that most people make when Noah was told to take two of every flesh aboard the ark and um, in that um, uh, verse 19, the word is basar, and it means human flesh also or mainly, not, not animal or anything, and then the animals followed. But basar is human flesh. Okay? It can even mean to teach. It comes from a prime that means to teach. So uh, when you analyze our Father's Word, the simplicity in which our Father teaches and brings forth the beginning is a fantastic thing. Noah has built this ark our father, at the Father's instructions, and it would be one thing. We have an ark of the end times as well, a five-month period. We'll be talking about it as we come into this chapter 7. And let's get right to it with a word of wisdom from our Father. Chapter 7, verse 1, and it reads, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for, uh, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. I've, I've uh, seen your perfect generation. You haven't mixed, you kept my word, you haven't mixed with these fallen angels and produced any hybrids, and you have a perfect family, the fitting to bring forth the Christ child, okay, in biblical cord, the umbilical cord, too. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Well, why, why would you take more well, for sacrifice as well as food um, aboard the ark? Uh, that's, um, uh, and, and only clean food and clean animals do you ever partake of, supposedly if you want to be healthy. Verse 3, of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. That's to say clean fowl, edible fowl. Verse 4, for yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. That's probation. That's the number of probation. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. The word destroys to blot out. It's not going to exist any longer. I'm going to cleanse it. You know, our Father will do this. This is why you want to beware of perversion. Anytime you do something unnatural or you go against God's plan, you're asking for a heap of hurt, and he's going to see that you get it. Okay. Um, anytime you go into a perverted situation, you're going to have diseases that are unimaginable. Verse 5, And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. That's very important. He followed the commandments of Almighty God. That pleases our Father. Why? Well, He loves you. you and as much as it's family, you should obey Him. Verse 6, and Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Um, and, and so it was. He was getting on along. But um, uh, it's, it's well that you remember when this flood began because it will be exactly one solar year from a date mentioned here soon. Verse 7, And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife, and his son's wives with him 
into the ark because of the waters of the flood. In other words, this was the Adamic family, the sons and daughters of Adam that survived the flood. There were eight souls of the Adamic Eth Ha'adam, plus those that Father had saved uh, of two of every flesh being human. And so it was. Verse, well, that's why we have all the races. God on the sixth day created them, and it was good until many began to mix, and so he kept back the clean. Verse 8, of clean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. Many are going to ask the question, well, why would he bring unclean animals aboard? Because they, have a, they are good for what they were created for. God didn't create anything without a purpose. They, they keep disease away from the clean animals and man. They take care of the, um, the filth because they're scavengers. They clean, clean up things. Verse 9. There went in two and two in, unto the ark, into the, unto Noah, into the ark, the male and the female as God had commanded Noah. Naturally, we have a divine intervention here that would cause this to pass. Verse 10, And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Here came the flood. 11, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. Uh, and uh, this, um, and and here comes that flood, and. And naturally, it was, it was not the flood to reach the volume of the Katabo, the first destruction of the first earth age, but it was a pretty good old gusher to, to, to cleanse the earth as um, in this particular time. Okay. Now, here's the date. Remember this date, and we'll be speaking of it again. Verse 12, And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights, 13, in the self-same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. And here are the eight souls mentioned in 1 Peter, of Eth Ha'adam. God separated and naturally, and uh, the various races as, as, as two of every flesh want to replenish the earth, but not with Geber and not with fallen angels, not with hybrids, but with men and women as God had created them. Verse 14, they and every beast after his kind and all cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort, every wing of every sort, kind after kind. That's God's way. Well, that's the way God created them. That's the way he wanted them. God loves man. He also loves animals, not as much as he loves his children, but he still loves his animals. That's why he created them. Why did he create them? Well, I think we can document that in Revelation chapter 4, the very last verse. He created all things for his pleasure. How disappointing it must have been when Satan and the fallen angels pulled what they did and that man would be so stupid to intermix with them and to bring uh, almost destruction upon God's plan of, man, of salvation. Verse 15. And they went in unto Noah, into the ark, two and, two and two, of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. Now, that, that's all inclusive. That means every living being, every race of people, mankind and animal. Verse 16. 
And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The Lord sealed him. Now again, I've told you, there is a flood in the end times coming. It's a flood of lies from Satan, as you will read in Revelation chapter 12, that this flood comes out on the earth, and God's elect stand against it. The earth helps men. We win. We have the victory. Why? Because God gives us power over our enemies, Satan being number one. But here they are, shut in and sealed by Almighty God. Verse 17. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark. It floated, and it was nipped up above the earth. Uh, and this was quite a large vessel. Okay. 18. And the waters prevailed, and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. Uh, and, and so it was that here we have God's plan well underway. Again, what brought this to pass? Perversion. Perversion not only by man, but by the fallen angels. And they're held in store for um, the end times, as we know from the great book of Jude, that um, they also are cast out again. And is it not amazing how, with the simplicity in which God teaches, that he gave us that first prophet, Enoch. And Enoch preached, as it is written in that book of Jude, against those fallen angels that came and intermixed with man, left their first place of habitation, and brought perversion into the world to an innocent people. And... This is what, in fact, God rejected. But again, at the same time, in God's overall plan, they're going to be cast out again. It's kind of like, have you done your homework? God wrote you a letter telling you exactly how it's going to go down by telling you exactly how it was in the beginning. And as it was in the beginning, so you can ascertain the end you know how it's going to go down. That is knowledge and wisdom and the simplicity in which Christ presents truth. And truth is this word of God. Verse 18, And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went up, um, went up upon the face of the waters. Uh, verse 19, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. There is a great distinction as to whether this was the high hills in that area of where the Geber were. Oh, that's the only thing God wanted to destroy, or was it worldwide? Well, that's, you can make your own mind up about that. Um, it's uh, possible both ways. I feel that it was to destroy I th God brought it to the point that it destroyed what he wished to destroy. That's to say the hybrids. God is always very much against perversion. And against perversion he shall always stand. Verse 20 to continue. Fifteen cubics upward did the waters prevail, the mount and the mountains were covered. Um, 21, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man, that is to say, that was not aboard that ark. God gave us a clean slate. He destroyed it. Uh, again, and many might say, well, um, Perversions are, oh, is it? You better think again. God doesn't wait until a cleansing um, before he takes care of perversion. Well, how, what is perversion? Anything that perverts that that is natural as God created it to be. Verse 22. 
all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died. They, they were gone. It was cleansed. They're gone. Over with. 23, and every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of, of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, now listen carefully, and they that were with him in the ark. Well, who was with him in the ark? Two of every flesh. All of the races were with him, including his own family of eight, which was, had a perfect pedigree and were capable of bringing forth um, the, uh, the birth of the Savior himself. They had not intermixed with these fallen angels. They had not intermixed with the hybrids. They had not delved into perversion. They were a family after God's own heart. And thus, uh, he used them to captain this ark. And how long was that ark there? Well, it would be five months. But there's a five-month rain again coming. Let's take that 24th verse. And the waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. Now, well, how long is 150 days? Well, by solar, 150 days is exactly five solar months. And, and what you want to remember, five months is exactly what Antichrist is given. His time is shortened to five months when he comes as the false messiah. You can read that in Revelation chapter 9. May through September, that particular stretch of the locust, and Satan's name is given to you in both the Hebrew and the Greek so that you can't go wrong. But in that five months, what happens? What did Christ tell us about this? You've heard me refer to it. Now you're going to read it. You're going to see it on the screen. Matthew chapter 24 speaks of the time the, that Satan comes to this earth as Antichrist. And in this 24th chapter, all seven events that make up the trumps, the seals, and the vials are explained, if you follow it. But our Heavenly Father tells us what to expect. What's it going? His question was, in, in, um, so that you have your sequence fixed, the question was, and as he said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came upon him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of this world? Well, this is it. This is one of the main signs of the end of this world. Let's read it. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. You'll have it on the screen. But of that day and hour knoweth no man the exact instant. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Our Father knows when he's going to push the button. But here's what happens, 37. But as the days of Noah, that's as it, just like it was in the days of Noah, were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, how, how was it in the days of Noah? Well, you, we just read it. We just studied about it. There were hybrids, fallen angels. They were giving and taking marriage. Children were being born. Hybrids. Is it? But as in the days of Noah were, so it's going to be again. 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage to those fallen angels until the day that Noah entered into the ark. It went on and on and on. And, and so it is. Verse 39, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It's going to be exactly like that. Why? Well, as it's written in Revelation chapter 12, Satan and his angels are going to be cast out onto this earth again. And they know they have but a short time, and he's going to play the role of false messiah big time. 
It's what we call instead of Christ or in the, the English tongue, Antichrist. But it, the word anti in the Greek means instead of. He's going to play that role totally and completely. And you know what's going to mystify and deceive most people? They are taught primarily that Satan is wicked, evil, wears red long handle underwear, carries a pitchfork and has horns, growls at every moment, and is just death walking around to happen. That's not true. Because as we know from the book of Daniel and Revelation, he comes in prosperously and peacefully, playing Christ. In other words, he can't pretend to be Christ, the Savior, and be murdering people. That's going to deceive a lot of people because they're expecting chaos and turmoil and, and the end. And when this lover boy comes in, this beauty, and he is, as God would say in Ezekiel 28, I created you the full pattern. Why, he earned it then. And, uh, and he plays that role. So what does it mean? Well, Christ, do you believe Christ or not? You're either a Christian or you're not. He said it's going to be just like it was in the days of Noah. That's why we're teaching this book of the beginning, that is to say Genesis, whereby you know what it was during the flood because that's exactly how it will be again. They're going to be giving and taking in marriage, this is, why you, this is why, as I told you in the lecture before last, as it is written in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10, you don't put, a woman shouldn't worry about cutting her hair, but keeping Christ over her head because of the angels. What angels? Those fallen angels. That's what a woman wants to be careful of. Why? They're coming back. And, and um, naturally, they're always after the daughters of Adam, and so it is. So we have that flood coming. It is a five-month period, and you better get aboard the ark of the end times. That is the truth. It is God's word. It is the sealing. And just as he sealed them in the ark, he sealed you with the truth. And do you know what that does for you as it's written in Revelation chapter 9, verse 4? When Satan is cast out, he said, you can't touch those that have the seal of God in their forehead. So you want to put that seal in your mind. What's in your forehead, your brain, use it. Meaning if you have God's truth, there's no way Satan can deceive you trying to play Jesus boy. For he's a fake, a fraud, and the father of it. Chapter 8, verse 1, let's get into it. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that were with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the water assuaged. That they subsided. Verse two: the fountains also of the deep of the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. Verse three: and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. There's that five-month period. That's the flood of Noah, five months, the flood of, of Satan in the end. Verse 4, and the ark rested in the seventh month of the 17th day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat, uh, which means high ground. Five, and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. They come into sight. Verse six, and it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the windows of the ark, which he had made. And, and there it was. What did he do? Verse 7, And he sent forth a raven. That's an unclean bird. Got it? They'll eat anything, basically. Which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. He didn't come back. 
and probably because he found plenty of stuff floating around that he, he was in Raven ha Haven for a, a while there, okay, with the, the raven being unclean as we learn in chapter 11, verse uh, 15 of, of the great book of Leviticus. Uh, verse 8, And he sent forth a dove from him, to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the earth. And we know from Deuteronomy 14, 11, that a dove is a clean bird, one of the clean. Verse 9, But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. And then he put forth his hand, and he took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. He reached out and grabbed the little bird and brought her back into the ark for protection again and safety. Verse 10, And he stayed yet another seven days, a spiritual completeness, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. What does she do this time? Verse 11, And the dove came into him in the evening and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf, plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. Now, this tells you a great deal if you'll analyze it in your mind. We know from Jeremiah chapter 4 that when the catabol, when the overthrow of this earth age happened, that first great destruction, not Noah's flood, Everything was destroyed, every tree, every man, every city, all. Now, you know how long it takes an olive tree to grow, and you know how long it takes it to produce a leaf. So the tree was not destroyed. It was just covered maybe a little with floodwaters, and that, not dead, and that leaf sprouted forth. And of course, the olive being the oil of our people, that tree that produces it, uh, lets us know that our Father's well in control. And that bird of peace, that dove, which is always symbolic of where the Holy Spirit is, brings forth that great sign that the olive tree is growing. The olive tree has uh, produced a leaf. Uh, verse 12 to continue. And, and he stayed yet another seven days and sent forth the dove which uh, returned not again unto him any more, and had found peace, no doubt. 13, and it came to pass in the 600th and first year, in the first month, in the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. Now listen carefully, 14, and in the seventh, I'm sorry, in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. This is exactly one solar year. I said solar. That's the time that God's children go by. Not moons, not darkness, not night, uh, not lunar. That brings forth lunar texts. But solar, children of light. Exactly one solar year from the seventh chapter, verse 11, when this began. One year exactly by the solar calendar, the solar year in which even we figure, uh, figure Passover from, uh, by the solar calendar, not moons, which is Satan's calendar. All prophecies given in months have to do with Satan all prophecies given in days have to do with God's children, children of light. That's an easy rule of the thumb to know and to understand prophecy. So that's why it's important. You that have companion Bibles, you're very fortunate. There will be many of the major things that were figured by solar calendar that occurred in down through history, not only this, but many other in very important occasions. And you will have that in your commentary column uh, adjacent to this particular verse. Uh, verse 15, 
And God spake unto Noah, saying, 16, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. You, you go forth. 17, Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, that's, that's all beings, also, both of fowl and cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. That they can, that they can replenish it. And they would. All of the races which we have with us to this day, and it is good. And all of the peoples, and even the family through which Christ would come, that is good. And both clean animals and animals that do the cleansing. Verse 18, And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. 19, Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kind went forth out of the ark. They're recovering this earth. 20, and Noah built in an altar, this is the first altar made, unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar to our Heavenly Father. This was the reason some of them were brought along for food and sacrifice. 21, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor, it pleased him. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for men's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil his, uh, from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. And th that is a promise from our Heavenly Father, and it's a promise he will keep. One more verse to complete the chapter. Verse 22. While the earth remaineth, you listen to me, this is a promise from your Father. While the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. So when one of these fuddy-duddies tries to bring something along about global warming, Laugh at them, the poor, miserable wretches, misguiding and twisting figures and numbers to make it seem when, in, if anything, it's getting colder, not warmer. God's promise. There would always be cold, there would always be heat. Yeah, you can count on God's way of having global warming. It comes every spring. That's common sense. So watch the fuddy duddies. All they're doing is try to raising a base of taxation and money to rip off people that are ignorant. Do you believe Almighty God, or do you believe fuddy duddies? I don't know. That's up to you. There you got it. One more time. Don't miss the next lecture. All right. Bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the mark of the beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. And there we are back again. Let's have the 800 number, please. 1-800-643-4645. That number is good from Puerto Rico throughout the U.S., Alaska, Hawaii, all over Canada. If the spirit moves, you got a question, share it. Please never ask a question about a particular reverend, denomination, or organization. We don't judge people. 
We have one judge, that's our Father. He does not wish our help. Okay. You do have spiritual discernment, letting you know what you should believe, who you should follow, what you should study. I hope it's always God's Word, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. That's truth, and the truth will always set you free. Those of you that listen by short wave around the world, it's always a pleasure hearing from you, and your announcer at the end of the hour will give you a mailing address. Got a prayer request? You don't need the number, don't need an address. Why? God knows what you're thinking right now. He does. He created you different than anyone else. Your DNA is different. You know something? He loves you. You're unique. But he does want you to return that love, or he will withdraw his love from you. Without God's blessings, life is not all that pleasurable. It's so much more pleasurable to have God's blessings in your life. Father, around the globe, we come, we ask that you lead, guide, direct, Father, touch in Yeshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay, and question time. And we've got uh, Jacob from Maryland. I want to know why they only talk about God making Adam and Eve and not the others he made? Well, that's a good question, but I will not judge them, but is it not strange why it is not taught? Because it's written, and it's written in such a way that if you dig into it, it's so simple a child can understand, and you wouldn't have the racial problems that we have if you understand God created all the races the way he wanted them. And he looked, and it was good. So they're all God's children. God loves them, and everyone should love them as well. It's good and well. Uh, Brian from Illinois. I, also, I'd like to think the Holy Spirit is the Father's Spirit, not some third person down here. Am I right in this? Thank you. Well, nat the, naturally, the Holy Spirit is God's Spirit. It's the Spirit of the Father and the Son. And... Um, uh, that's, that is made clear in many places in the Scripture. Um, uh, Kathleen from, um, Kathleen, rather, from Tennessee. Okay, I, I depend on my Social Security disability check when the Antichrist is in charge of the global economy. Will it be wrong to keep taking money from the government? I don't want to do anything at best that would... Um, Crucial, in a, at a crucial time to displease the Lord. You know, the only thing you have to worry about is if you were to have to worship the false Messiah to receive money. That you do not want to do. But this is why that always have a nice pantry and keep her fairly well stocked for this is a very short time that we even have to worry about anyway. But Mainly, God takes care of his own, so you don't have anything to worry about, and don't you be uptight about it. Just don't worship the false messiah, and you're fine. You're home free. Tony from Arizona. My question is about the unforgivable sin. How is a person to determine if it is God trying to speak through him, or if it is his own conscience telling him what to say before the Antichrist? Uh, you see... It is impossible for man to speak the tongue of Pentecost. You don't have to worry about making a mistake and speaking it. Man cannot do that because it is a language that comes out in every language. It's called the cloven tongue. Only God can do that. If man thinks he can do it, he's kidding himself because it comes out not unknown but clearly in every language of the world. And God's not going to try to trick you. He will never put anything on you that you can't handle, and he'll always show you a way through. You might read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and feel very comfortable. But there is no way you could force it or fake it or anything because it would only come out in one language. Um, many of us can speak more than one language, but only one at a time. The cloven tongue comes out in all languages at exactly the same time. You don't have to worry about it. Man can't do that. That's the Holy Spirit speaking. Um, Harold from California, a pastor, 
Please explain Revelations 12.1, especially the meaning of the moon under her feet, what the meaning of the moon is or who the moon is. Thank you. Probably you could find the answer to that. It's, it is the em, embryo, embryo of Israel. And probably you could, back in uh, Genesis chapter 37, when uh, Joseph would say that he had a dream that uh, the uh, that they uh, the sun the moon and the eleven stars were paying obeisance to him, it was God's way of saying giving the zodiac and the movements, the coming zamak the Virgo the Virgin and the birth of Christ, and uh, and then naturally as you continue on in that twelfth chapter of Revelation. It speaks of the woman, the virgin, giving birth and Satan trying to um, destroy him. And I think you would, I think, read Genesis um, and, uh, 37, and I think it'll help you a lot there. Uh, Irene, Eileen from Maine, why in uh, Genesis 1-3 God made the light, then in Genesis 1-6, the second day he made the expanse between the waters and water, then on the fourth day, he goes back to making lights. Why didn't he just make the lights all in one day? Two different kind of lights. The first, you must have missed that first lecture. The first light created was the Spirit of God that moved upon the earth. You get it from verse 1 and 2, that God's Spirit, verse 2 and 3, that God's Spirit would move upon and that, that is the light. God is light. And if you remember right, I took you to Revelation chapter 21, verses 20 through 24, where it said, hey, there wasn't a sun or a moon because the Father and the Son are the light thereof. That's the light we're talking about in that case. Uh, Charlie from Michigan, will a day in the millennium, 1,000 years, be, be uh, fast because we are in the spirit? Well, it, it, we'll have a lot of work to do, so it'll move along pretty rapidly. But uh, the main thing is to remember, when you're in a spiritual body, time means nothing. Time, such as age, has no effect on a spiritual body. So you don't get old. And, um, and um, crotchety. You, you have that youthful vivaciousness always for an eternity. So it is, it'll be fun, and there'll be a lot of teaching and correcting and uh, instructing. The main thing that will be taught in the millennium is discipline. Uh, Elmo from Virginia, can you explain to me when the two wars fought only by God in the near future, how long will they last? Thank you, I watch your program daily, Elmo. Well, Elmo, it's good to have you with us. The two battles you speak of is Haman, Gog, and Armageddon. Armageddon is the city of Megiddo, which is to say, uh, the gathering place of the crowd. That's what the word Megiddo means in the Hebrew tongue. Uh, it, it means that uh, that battle takes place on Mount Zion because that's where the crowd, Satan and his fallen angels will gather and Christ is going to cleanse it. The other will be Haman Gog, that is the valley of Gog, the multitude of Gog. I feel it will be Alaska. I think that's why we bought Alaska from Russia, is to be, bury the dead, the atheists that come against a Christian nation. Ne neither of those battles will last over 15 minutes. God will do all the fighting, and he'll cleanse them, just zap. You know, when it's raining hailstones weighing 180 pounds, that pulverizes anything and everything. Okay, we got Grace from, no, I'm sorry, this is uh, Elizabeth from Virginia. Uh, thank you for your comment. My question, please explain the meaning of the fig tree generation and are, the movie, are we moving into the third earth age? 
Well, we do not move into the third earth age until after the millennium. The millennium is a part of this earth age. The parable of the fig tree is very simple. The fig tree is when Israel would become a nation again from Jeremiah chapter 24. That happened in 1948. But the mystery has to do with Jeremiah 24 that you got some very bad figs and you've got some very good figs. The bad figs come from the very fig leaves of the garden that we just covered, that Adam and Eve covered themselves with their private parts, with fig leaves, because they had been um, uh, beguiled by Satan himself. And that's, this is one of the reasons uh, that the second influx of the Nephilim fallen angels, Satan's trying to destroy the woman so that Christ could not be born. That's what the parable of the fig tree has to do with. The main thing is, is to know that once it happened, 1948, that that generation would not pass away until all prophecy was fulfilled, Mark chapter 13. Uh, Larry from Georgia, if we all come from Yahweh, the one-third that followed Satan in the first earth age, did Yahweh put those souls into in the in Cain's children. If we all return to paradise at the right or wrong side of the gulf, or these souls part of the one third that followed Satan? Well, I, I, you know, there's not that many Kenites. A third that followed Satan were deceived, and hey, that's that doesn't mean that that's all that followed him. There was only 7,000 of God's elect that stood against Satan and fought. The others were beguiled by him. One third actually worshiped him. The next third, they didn't care. They're just, they're the same people today. They don't give two hoots. Long, just give me a job and a check and I'm happy. Just don't bother me. The other third, to make up the three thirds, is just give me my boat, my fishing boat, and my this, that, and the other, and just stay out of my life. Okay. They don't care. But then you do have that remnant that God utilizes, and many will follow and worship Satan, uh, sadly to say. Uh, Janet from Georgia. My brother was 19 years old when he was killed in an auto accident. He was drinking and crashed one half mile from home. He loved the Lord and was saved. I read somewhere that a drunkard will not enter the kingdom of heaven, but I also read you can be drunk with evil spirits. Is this what Jesus uh, wa was? Um, you know, this is something that you never want to judge someone. If he loved the Lord, then he's with the Lord. Okay. Uh, it's, I'm sure that you never know what happens in the last seconds, instance, a Christian always cries out to the Father when they see they're in trouble and ask forgiveness. So you, you can't judge that and you don't know. But if you're worried about your father, your son, brother rather, being heaven bound, you're wasting your time. Because if he loved the Lord, the Lord certainly loved him. And um, mistakes are mistakes, but that's something we, we can't judge. And besides, we have the millennium coming and... Uh, if your brother loved the Lord, I, I would say he's in fantastic shape. Sylvia from Virginia. When the Antichrist comes, and will God give us the words to the day like uh, he, when Satan tempts us to try to convert one? Um, God, God takes care of things. He gives you the words to say. As a matter of fact, he's the one that speaks through you. You don't have to. To, you don't have to even be worried about it, okay? You're not going to bend to the false messiah. Uh, okay, we got Gloria from Illinois. Matthew chapter 27, verses 52 and 54. I don't want to say what religious group told me this because I don't want it to seem as if I am putting them down. It clearly says the saints came out of the graves. They are saying this couldn't be true that when you are dead, you are dead. This group went as far as to say that those were lepers coming out of the cemetery, not that, well, they are certainly mistaken. And you're a little bit confused about it yourself. 
This was a one-time thing foretold of by Almighty God in John chapter 5 that it would come to pass. Why? It is to prove that Christ defeated death. These people did not, it appeared they came out of the ground. They were already with the Father. And he made it appear so that whereby a human being could look and for one and all times give record, Christ defeated death. So believe upon him. That being the purpose. They were certainly not lepers. They were people that were flesh dead, but spiritually very much alive in their spiritual bodies. Uh, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Alice from North Carolina. I heard you say that Canaan, who was Ham's son, was from incest between Ham and his father's wife. Could you send or say scripture to verify this? I listen to you every day. Well, it's real simple. It's Leviticus chapter 20, verse 11. You might also make a note of Leviticus chapter 18, verse 8. What does 2011 say? First of all, what did Ham do? Ham uncovered his father's nakedness. Now, what you need to do is figure out what does that figure of speech mean in the, what does that idiom mean in the Hebrew language? Well, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 11 tells you, to uncover your father's nakedness is to lie with his wife or your mother, whichever the case may be. And, and so it is. Men had more than one wife at that time many times, so it wouldn't necessarily be a mother. In this case, it was. And it wasn't God that drove Canaan away. It was Noah because of the incestuous affair. And so it's real easy to document it. Leviticus 20, 11. Uh, Daniel from Arizona. Where can I find one-third of the angels followed Satan in the first earth age? Also, what is an advent? Well, an advent, there's the first advent, Christ's appearance on earth. The second advent is when he returns to destroy uh, Satan and set up the, the Lord's day, which is to say the millennium. Uh, you can find the third that followed Satan in Revelation chapter 12, where one of Satan's names is the dragon. Many people must learn Satan has many names, dragon, serpent, Lucifer, um, little horn, um, vile person, all kinds of names, but it's only one Satan, okay? And his, the, also the dragon is one of his names. Drew a third in the first earth age, drew a third with his tail away from God, which means his lies. Les from Texas, please help me understand about the ten tribes, which one came to America? Did other tribes go to other places? Is there any way to know which tribe we came from? Well, it's very difficult because the tribes mix together. But uh, at the same time, if, if you want to put a great deal in it, we have, we have a little booklet in our library titled Abrahamic Covenant. And it will probably help you more than you probably even want to be helped. But um, the, um, the father didn't lose any tribes, okay? And it's that they kind of forget who they are. And, and so it is. There is a reason for everything and very few accidents and anything. God is very much in control, always has been, always will be. Sharon from Texas. Uh, I want to back back up again. Many people, we, we um, uh, what is it that the Hollanders sing? Reuben, Reuben, I've been thinking. You know, a lot of these fairy tales or folk songs that come down even give identities if you listen. Interesting what? Sharon from Texas. Pastor Murray, will we remember what has happened to us in the past while we are in heaven and meet up with our loved ones? What about the abusive memories? Will we have to forgive those that make it? Well, um, that, um, you know, that's a, such a wonderful time. But sure, you will be able to remember. And at the same time, it won't seem as important then as it does now. I guarantee you that. Will you know your loved ones? Of course you will. We've, we've mentioned that many times in Ezekiel, the millennium chapters. 
um, chapter 44, verses 20 through 25. You know your immediate family. Why? Because in the spiritual bodies, they're all young. They're all the same age in the spiritual body, but they still look the same. Mike from Wisconsin. Pastor Murray, does it state in the Bible that tw in 2012 that all things will start lining up for the end? No, it doesn't. Doesn't state that at all. As a matter of fact, I, I read uh, a portion of that today that no man knows the instant, the hour, not an angel knows it, only our Heavenly Father. When you put those together, the moment, the uh, time, it means instant. We do know the season. And the wise, as Daniel would say in the great book of Daniel, close the book, you're not going to be, but the wise in the end times will understand the season. Not the day, not the hour, but the season. We're in that season now, and you want to be very watchful, for you are a watchman, and watchman's all, a watchman always watches. Troy from Pennsylvania, Pastor Murray is a, as a past Marine, there's no such thing as a past Marine. Once you're a Marine, you're always a Marine. What do you think about the lifting of the don't ask, don't tell policy in the military? What does the Bible say about it? Well, the, the Bible calls it perversion, of course. And certainly, we have one instant today where much information was leaked by someone that, that uh, doesn't fit the criteria and certainly causes much harm and hurt. So that's what I think about it, and so it is. Uh, all Marines feel about the same way. We're, I'm out of time. Hey, I love you all because you enjoy studying God's Word. Most of all, God loves you for it and makes His day. And when you make His day, boy, is He going to make yours. Uh, so uh, let Him know you love Him, won't you? Mo mo we, we're brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, you bless God. He will always bless you. Now, the most important, though, you listen to me, listen good. Stay in his word every day. And his word is a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Because Jesus, Yeshua, he is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan.
Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. We're ready to get back into our Father's Word. As you can see, we're going to talk about faith. Faith is what some might call a very simple subject, but faith for some people is very difficult to comprehend, to understand the full value of faith. Does everything hinge on faith? That would be a fair statement.